Hello, what is up guys? Now, when we think about cars and the carbon footprint behind them, we may already be aware of the fact that burning gasoline, which powers the cars, will emit CO2. We may also realize that the electricity that powers the batteries in our electric vehicles may also come from a coal-fired or natural gas combined cycle power plant. So for each and every single car that is out on the road or in the world, we can imagine the massive amounts of CO2 emissions that is emitted in just a single traffic lane, or even when you take all cars combined and look at their emissions globally. Now, what we may also think about is that there is more than just the usage of the car. There are other parts of its life cycle, assembling together the parts, extracting the metals, the refining process, and even the waste disposal all contribute to CO2 emissions. When all this is added up, it can make a significant impact. One potential alternative to helping reduce CO2 emissions can be found in the growing electric vehicle, or EV, market. EVs boast that they are better for the environment by removing the combustion of fossil fuels from their vehicles through the use of a rechargeable battery. The combustion in regular vehicles uses a heat engine which inefficiently produces energy from gasoline or diesel sources. The automobile industry is on the verge of moving from vehicles powered by inefficient heat engines to more energy efficient batteries. While there are challenges and limitations to the transition from standard internal combustion engines to electric vehicles, such as the large physical space that a battery takes up, the range that a person can drive out for, or the upfront price of the car, electric vehicles are becoming more and more prominent in our society. To appreciate these batteries more, let's take a quick history lesson. To begin this discussion, what do we mean when we use the term battery? A battery is a self-contained device that is able to convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Electrical energy is made through the movement of electrons in an external circuit, such as a wire. Although there are debated ancient and historical batteries, the first recognizable battery as we know it now uh, was developed in the 1800s. This first invented battery is credited to Alessandro Volta, when in 1800 he separated copper and zinc plates by brined cloth soaked in salty water. The prevailing theory at the time was that electricity was generated inside living beings termed animal electricity based on Galvani's experiments using a frog. Almost 60 years later, in 1859, Gaston Plante created another type of battery by placing lead sheets in a bath of sulfuric acid. This created the first rechargeable battery. This battery began what we now know as the lead acid battery. Then, 120 years later, John Goodenough invented the first lithium-ion battery in 1980, which was awarded the Nobel Prize of Chemistry just last year. For a rechargeable battery, a voltage is applied during the charging process. This voltage can be supplied by your home or charging station in the case of electric vehicles. When charging, electrons move from the cathode to the anode through the external wire, and lithium ions move through a separator in the electrolyte towards the anode. During discharge, everything works in the opposite direction, and this will produce a voltage for your vehicle. By stacking batteries in both series and parallel configurations, voltage and current delivered can be improved to the point that a car can be powered for regular use. With both the theory and the history of lithium-ion batteries out of the way, let's discuss the life cycle of these devices through some calculations. For the purposes of comparison between the two modes of transportation, we will be looking at the productive energy from a Tesla Model 3 battery. The battery is given with a capacity of 75 kilowatt hours, a range of 496 kilometers, and an expected lifetime of 160,000 kilometers. The lifetime battery capacity can be calculated as shown. This comes out to be about 24,000 kilowatt hours. Given that the electric vehicle energy efficiency is about 90% efficient, the productive energy of the Tesla Model 3 is about 22,000 kilowatt hours. We will be using the energy of the Tesla Model 3 as our energy basis to compare electric vehicles and internal combustion engines. To provide the 22,000 kilowatt hours of productive energy throughout the lifespan of the vehicle, there is input energy from the grid that needs to be provided with some efficiency losses. Considering how electric vehicle wall charging efficiency hovers around 84%, the input energy needed to provide the energy for the vehicle to run is about 29,000 kilowatt hours. Regarding production of the batteries, there is one ton of CO2 produced per battery pack. The emissions factor for the battery is 94 tons of CO2 per terajoule of electricity. Combined, this equates to a production energy input of about 3,000 kilowatt hours. Moving on to the internal combustion engines, to provide 22,000 kilowatt hours of energy for the vehicle, 87,000 kilowatt hours of energy is needed through fossil fuels. The large input energy relative to electric vehicles is due to the low efficiency of heat engines with respect to batteries. Although you may be wondering why our vehicles work despite such low efficiencies, it is due to the fact that gasoline and diesel are relatively cheap for fuel for our economy. 
Moving on to the production energy of gasoline, gasoline can be extracted with about 9% of the energy of the gasoline itself. This production efficiency provides that it takes about 7,800 kilowatt hours of energy to produce and extract gasoline for our vehicles. Finally, looking at both potential fuel force sources for the vehicles, we can see that for our base unit of productive energy, 22,000 kilowatt hours, the lithium ion battery uses less energy in its energy input into the vehicles and in its production of the energy. The electric vehicle uses about 29,000 kilowatt hours compared to the internal combustion engine 87,000 kilowatt hours for the energy input step. And the electric vehicle uses only 3,000 kilowatt hours compared to the internal combustion engine 7,800 kilowatt hours for the energy production step of the lifespan of the vehicle. The electric vehicle uses 32,000 kilowatt hours total for its base unit of energy, while the internal combustion engine uses 95,000 kilowatt hours of energy for the base unit of energy. The electric vehicle has an energy efficiency of about 69% compared to the internal combustion ener engine energy efficiency of about 23%. With respect to carbon efficiency, the electric vehicle produces 4 watt hours of energy per kilogram of CO2, while the internal combustion ener engine only produces 1 watt hour of energy per kilogram of CO2. Here in the graph above, we see visually the difference between lithium ion batteries and gasoline for their input energies, production energies, the total energy use, and finally the difference in their efficiencies. Lithium ion batteries appear to be more energy efficient with respect to the usable energy pulled out compared to the energy put into the batteries. The same also holds true for the carbon efficiency of lithium ion batteries compared to gasoline. Regarding efficiency, lithium ion batteries are also able to be recycled and reused as opposed to gasoline, which is burned once and emitted into the atmosphere. Although electric vehicles may be powered from unclean sources of electricity, like coal-powered power plants, since electric vehicles are more energy efficient with respect to gasoline, they can maximize the energy from less clean sources of electricity in our grids, which is preferable as our society transitions to the future. Thanks for watching everyone. Like all YouTubers will ask you to like like here, subscribe here, or or here. Sub subscribe here. I think Steven's going to put the subscribe button here. So so click here to subscribe. And if you want to leave a comment, you can leave a comment down below. You, you know what? It doesn't have to be a good comment. You can type some random gibberish. It really helps our YouTube video get up in the search rankings. And that help button likes a lot too. So just click them. Click everything. And we'll see you next time.